Hey guys, it's Pat Star. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have a very special guest. This video is super different and unlike any other, it's for all you aspiring makeup artists out there. I want to introduce to you guys my friend, Sir John. <laughs> Hey guys. What's up? What's up, babe? Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, you are the first to this series. I wanted to do a series for you guys out there. If you guys are aspiring makeup artists, we watch YouTube tutorials day and night, and there are so many, but I thought I would bring in Sir John. Perfect. Sir John is an amazing celebrity makeup artist. He does Kim Kardashian. Who else? Viola Davis, uh, Beyonce, Chrissy Teigen, Olivia Culpo. Those are my girls. We're gonna just dive into it and ask you questions because I've never had a workbook of videos to see what how I could be a makeup artist. So I'm here to pick your That's brain right. and for everyone to pick your totally. brain to see Ask away. how you got started. I started out as a makeup artist in Atlanta, actually. I was in school for a very small amount of time there studying art history and a makeup artist canceled uh, who was doing a photo shoot for a friend of mine who does, she was a catalog model. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, hey, listen, I know you're a painter. Can you sort of put this, can you put this together? Can you do my face? I'm like, babe, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what makeup is. You know, I know paint brushes, but so I did it. And this photographer, he's like, oh my God, this is good. Can you come back next Saturday and do the same thing? I'll pay you $250. And at the time I was 19 or 18, 19 years old, I'm a struggling college student. And I was like, you can pay someone to do makeup, put makeup on someone. So yeah, of course I'm going to be back. And um, I went back. And what so, were you doing at the time though? You were just um, going to I was school? a student, just a student. Were uh, you working? At the time I was like between jobs or I was 18, 19, 19 years old. Well, so what, what other jobs can, can you say? I was like working Anything. at a clothing store, United Clothes Benetton at the time. And so then after that, um, I basically started working for MAC Cosmetics at, in, in Lenox Square in Atlanta. And then I became like one of the highest sellers, I assume. And so they transferred me to New York to open a Bloomingdale's Soho location. Um, this is back in 2001 or some two, wow. something two something like that. So after that photo shoot, you knew you wanted to do. I knew that I was good at it. I knew okay. that I didn't know so much. That I wanted to do this as a career. I just knew that I was good at it, and it was something that would, could possibly pay my bills. And but I was ch I was actually chasing something else. Emotionally, I wanted to be I wanted to be a designer. I wanted to do menswear. Okay. But the good thing about working at a makeup counter is the fact that you learn so many cultural nuances from all these different women you know you, there's a mosaic of women that come in your door every day mm -hmm. and they need help and they all have different concerns and they all have different psychology of, of what beauty is and what constitutes beauty you know so from harlem to hong kong i became every woman's guy mm -hmm. um and you have to address the needs of women in, in that way so that it was the biggest educator for me in terms of cosmetics i left mac and i went completely in a novel direction i didn't do makeup at all any longer i worked i went into visual merchandising so i started doing the windows at Bergdorf uh, Goodman in New York, uh, Henry Bendel's um, Barney's. I became the men's merchandiser for Gucci. I did Gucci. not know that. Yeah, I became the men's merchandiser for Gucci for a while. So it was all about creating a story or this so illusion. So you're always creative, you're a visual artist. Yeah. I love fantasy, I love illusion. I love a sense of, uh, you know, inspiration and uh, what that can be. And it, mm -hmm. it, it encompasses so many different things and it can go into so many different areas. I love home as well. I love what you've done with this place. It's, oh, thank you. This is a story. It's not just about makeup. So if you're really good at makeup, you you should also be really good into in your home. You should be really good with your wardrobe. You should be really good just making. Are you complimenting I, me? I think you look so hot oh today. Oh my god! <laughs> she was indirectly compl complimenting me like. Yeah. Thank you. So you've you've done retail. You've done artistry. You've done Mac. You've done visual merchandising. Yeah. Windows. What? And then of course now working with top celebrities yeah. and well, your kit is huge. Thanks. Well, that's one of two. I got back into the business at that time, so I left, you know, visual merchandising. And then I, I met uh, one of Pat McGrath's assistants on the street. Okay. I was actually on a lunch break, and he said, "Hey, listen, you know, I know this lady. She's uh, she's amazing. You, she travels all the time. She does amazing work." I didn't really know who Pat was at the time because I wasn't so into like the beauty uh -huh. of fashion. Was, you didn't have YouTube. This is pre Instagram. This is pre. Okay. This is when the fashion shows. So, were kids, still this is how it was back in the day. Just yeah. so you know, there was no YouTube. No, there no was Instagram. no social media. At but this now time. we're here to learn, so we're yeah. able to utilize a big platform. Yeah, so, right. so Absolutely. you met Pat. So, yeah, so I met Pat, and then basically she says, you know, hey, listen, are you gonna be, uh, are you gonna be at the Italian shows? So I was at this was New York Fashion Week, mind you. I had no passport. I had really no money to get to Italy, but I told her, yes, I'll be there. So I didn't want to put it on her. I was like, you know, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it happen for myself. I'm gonna get my ass to Italy. I got there. So basically, I borrowed money from a few people, had a passport rust, done all the stuff on the back end just to make myself present there so that I can meet the opportunity when the opportunity wow. happened. And then I went to, my first show was at uh, Dolce & Gabbana, and then after she took me to Prada, 
and then we I was you know on that whole just circuit. whisked away. Yeah. And so then, would you, would you consider this mm-hmm. like your big break or in, was back that, into it from I, just bumping into that friend? That was one of the big breaks. I've had a few lo- massive, a few massive breaks in my like career. Like a few milestones. Yeah, yes. that I can that I'm going to name out. But long story short, I met my first celebrity client on that trip. So while I was in Milan, I get a call to go to Naomi Campbell's room. You know. So she was the first person I ever worked with who happened to be like a mm-hmm. thing or a name. Or- and how was that? Because I'm sure a lot of kids uh, want to do makeup and want to learn. And yeah. like from, from your first milestone, bumping into your friend, it is about who you know, being kind, even though you were let go from yeah. Mac and your job, you it's still kept those relationships. It's all about relationships, that's babe. What it's about. When you're a good person, when you have good energy, when you have something to contribute to a conversation, when you educate yourself on more than just the business, people will fight for you. When you have good energy and you, and you know and you aid into like the environment, people want to make sure that you're back or make sure that you're around. Right. So uh, but I want to say part of my success happened to be I, I love to make people feel good. I love to be, I love people. So mm-hmm. I, I, there's so many people who are amazing makeup artists or amazing hairstylists who have really bad attitudes. And I'm not in the business of just makeup. I'm in the business of people. Though the people who are sweeping the floor are just as important to me as Beyonce. Mm-hmm. And I want to go back to how we met because yeah. it's similar to, <laughs> to how it is. Because like, I think I have nothing to do yeah. with Sir John official Verify. <laughs> I like, like I I do YouTube and, and I, I I love makeup artists. I love makeup, but I think it was just so funny how we met. We, you did the Emmys and I did some um, makeup event and we bumped into to each other at the at a bar. bar. We were at a bar having a. I was and having he a margarita stopped me. And I fanned out and I was like, Oh my god! And this he is said, Patrick. Oh my god! Hey, listen, how are you? I love what you're doing. I want to work with you one day. I think what you're doing is so progressive and. It, it also allows our, our industry to become more inclusive, you know? Yeah. And, and there's com- there's different lanes and there's different avenues and everyone doesn't have to have a cookie cutter way to approach the same road or same platform, you know? So my, my ro- road or journey is completely different than yours, but we're on the same couch talking about the same right. thing today. That you know? is so yeah. funny. Yeah. But, but, like, thank you so much for being Absolutely. here. Name other big yeah. breaks that you've had. So, so basically after that, so Naomi was the first. So I started working with Charlotte Tilbury. So we all know Charlotte has this massive make, cosmetics brand. Okay. But she's definitely one of my mentors still to this day. And the great thing about Charlotte is she said, you know, as an assistant, this is one thing I want to mention, okay? Mm-hmm. Is that a lot of people, millennials, are in this whole, we're in a society where no one wants to be the background. No one wants to assist or no one wants to, everyone wants to just shine and just be the best or I just want to be famous now. But do the work and I was the best assistant. I made sure that these girls or these women had what they needed before they even turned their head. Mm-hmm. I knew what they needed next. It wasn't about you know an ego, it was about what can I contribute to this room? How can, if I'm gonna be in the right. background, how can I be the most impactful assistant here where I created a need for myself? So Charlotte basically, we were in um, Tom Ford's first women's work show, okay. 2010. So she was pointing out to these names of who you're gonna do, who I need you to do, who I need you to do to all of her assistants and then she pointed to the Beyonce's name. And so I was like, well, I don't know any models named Beyonce. Beyonce walked his first show for women. You know? okay. And I am like, okay, so I need to do her makeup is what you're telling me. So I don't know how this is going to go. So I have to give me a second. I have to go to the bathroom, call my mom. <laughs> so I went to the bathroom, panicked, called my mom. I was like, mom, I don't know if I can do this. This is too much for me. Uh... She's like, babe, just... Just do you just do whatever you do. This is this. She puts her. Uh, her I'm getting goosebumps on yeah. my neck. You know when they say that, like I got it on my neck. Yeah. that is so cool. Yeah, I've so never cool. heard this, so I think it's yeah, really so, cool. So they open. You know, she was in her office, in his office. I'm sorry, Tom's office. So and Tom Ford is such has. We've run parallel. 2016, I won uh, Makeup Artist of the Year for uh-huh. Install Awards. Yes. And he was Designer of the Year. But yes. so for me to be in the same lineup as Priyanka Chopra and Nicole Kidman and Tom Ford. It just, I would just, this is, this is not real. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So for, for the viewers out there, it's, I think it's about connecting with, with whoever, whenever, Absolutely. being nice, being kind, being helpful. And Absolutely. I also had an incident too, where Absolutely. I also didn't have a passport. So Benefit um, and Tara and all these brands have these trips for us. Right. I was asked to go and I said, sure, I have a passport. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, okay, can you tell us the number so we can book your flight? Oh my god. I was like, yeah, but in order to get a passport, you have to have to expedite a passport, you have to have a flight. Oh, yes. The next day, so I bought a fake plane ticket, a real plane ticket, but I which I never went yeah. to the Bahamas and drove to Atlanta from Orlando, Florida and said, "Oh my god, um I'm flying to the Bahamas tomorrow. I need my I need my passport." 
I never went to the Bahamas the next day, but I got my passport, wow. sent it to Benefit, and then a year later, I'm on display at Benefit in Sephora. Wow. Awesome. So it's so crazy because I was like, yeah, Benefit, I got, I got a passport. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta, get, get, give me seven hours. I'll get you a passport really quick. So it's funny how, how you didn't have a passport, yeah. I didn't have a passport, and then we're on these different But you know what, that's, what, what that means is that you have faith in yourself, but also you didn't put it off, and there, you know, and you didn't put it procrastinate and say, oh, it's, you know, it wasn't meant for me. To, no, if you want something, you go get it, and the world, the universe will conspire to help you get it. So, but you have to, you have to meet opportunity somewhere. You can't just expect it to just come in your house mm. like so many people. Right. You know? So now that you, yeah. that you least expect it, you call your mom. Yeah. And then you go to the office, you meet her. Yeah. So they open this uh, curtain and all this big gold hair and I see her and, and I'm like, okay, wow. This is the most important smoky eye. First words out your mouth. Do. Hi, I'm Sir John. <laughs> and I shook her hand and she was really nice and sweet. I just remember her beautiful smile. And I and that was the beginning of our relationship. I assume. What's important to me, I feel like I I, I used to be a, a professional makeup artist working, um, the follow up. Yeah. So how important mm. is is the ex number one the experience like yeah. your first time working with Beyonce and then the follow up for her to want to work with you again yeah. or for her to even remember you in a show. Yeah. A lot of people can learn from this. I knew she had an amazing makeup artist named Francesca Tullo. Everyone mm -hmm. should if you're a makeup artist. You should also all always know the people who came before you. Yes. The people who yes. who who put who the references. The reason why we do the smoky eye. The reason why Elizabeth Taylor had this or this person had that is because of these artists that came before us right. who didn't have social media. Of course. So um yeah, Francesca Tullo. She's an amazing makeup artist. She did. I mean Elizabeth Taylor diamond fragrance ads. I get chills enough to talk about her. I knew she was she was had a great makeup artist. So I was like, well, listen, I'm never gonna see her again. It's okay though. And so, but she followed my career and she, uh, I got summoned into her office one day and I saw all these photos. Francesca or Beyonce? Beyonce's office. Okay. When I went there, on the table were all these photos of Carly Claus, jo Jordan Dunn's, Joan Smalls. Like, this is pre-Instagram. There was no, you know. That now, you've done? Yeah. So now we have all of our work is displayed. But okay. back in the day, it was just like, my girl's going to go to a show. I mean, and once she leaves the show, she's going to take all the paparazzi, she's going to take photos of her. And then you just have these Polaroids of these photos. So... Be, they had all that work of mine, and then they were like, we want you to bring some of that here. This was a few years ago, and I signed a contract. I did a world tour, a couple world tours, and a few albums, and, and yeah. But, <laughs> but other than that, I, I think that I can contribute, I attribute the relationship that I have with most of my clients. It's, it's just about personality, and it's about raising this girl's vib vibration, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get too deep, but as a makeup artist or as a hairstylist, you're the last person the celebrity or the supermodel sees before she sings in front of millions of people around the world. Mm -hmm. Before she hits the runway or is photographed for a major campaign or an editorial or cover. Mm -hmm. So it's part of your job to make her feel good or to be in her space and make right. her, you know, just give her that much love or that much energy. And it doesn't have to be fake. It should be sincere. It should come from a good place. But you have to love yourself first, too, mm -hmm. you know? We've talked for 10, 15 minutes yeah. now. And we have not talked about foundation, concealer, liner, lashes, nothing. But to yeah. become an amazing makeup artist that has worked time and time again on all these A-list celebrities, a couple world tours, a couple campaigns, yeah. covers, it's, magazines. It's not about the makeup. Beyonce. It's not about the it's makeup. It's not about the makeup, and yeah. I think that's what's so important, too, is, is, is to build these relationships, yeah. to network, to work very hard, assist. And you said something earlier, I want to talk about it on camera yeah. now, is you said makeup artists should be like doctors and not hinder. Yeah, Wait, so, so I, w I was at, you know, Joan, um, she was in LA recently. Yeah. We went to dinner with Orlando Pita. So Orlando Pita is an amazing hairstylist mm -hmm. and everyone should know these names okay. if you take yourself seriously in the business. He gave me so many, so much tools of wisdom in this. Okay. He's just dropping knowledge. And I'm like, oh man, I'm sitting there just like, mm -hmm. and he's like, and our business is different. You know, we feel like we, we can't share with each other our experiences. I can't tell you a shortcut that I've had along the way. I can't tell you how I burn a bridge here that could save you from burning a bridge, you know? Mm -hmm. But in the medical industry, if you think about it, they rely on that sense of uh, that, that mosaic of, hey, listen, you've come to, uh, you find something out about medicine or uh, an operation. You share that with your community because that helps the whole community evolve. If, if you know, if the medical community hasn't shared their research or a shortcut on an operation, where would we be without modern medicine? Do you know? So if we can take anything away from that and learn that as a community, we can all rise by 
helping each other it's just mm-hmm. more impactful mm-hmm. i feel i feel that's yes. just my personal opinion yes yeah like, like I've, I've been asked like is there competition is yeah. there drama is there the... of course there is all it's, the above it's, it's but like a, it's competition it's, yeah but there it's i feel like you can only control yeah. what you contribute absolutely this is like Game of Thrones. To be a, no, no. Oh, listen, he bringing out Game you, of Thrones. Now. I don't want to say I'm Lord Snow, but if you, th- this is like Game of Thrones to a certain extent in terms of like you have to know what you stand for. You have to know what you deliver to your to an audience. But at the end of the day, can I be to, to uh, be yes. completely honest? I don't believe in competition because mm-hmm. I believe that if I'm authentically being myself, if I'm only being Sir John and only trying to anniversary what I did last year. I'm not in competition with anyone. So mm-hmm. I love what other people are doing. Mm-hmm. I think Mario has done amazing mm-hmm. for social media. Yes. And what he's done is impactful. Yes. And I learned from him. I learned from my peers. And I'm not in comp- competition with anybody except mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. I'm my own worst critic. I'm only looking at myself on what I did last year and how can I top that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. also, I want to give you guys a tip too. Okay. And this is really... This All is, the tips, please. This is, this is something that I want you guys to think about. I did a makeup class in Iceland recently. And they are like, where do you get inspiration? And, you know, should we go on YouTube or should we... And I think it's amazing to follow other YouTubers. I think it's amazing to follow other makeup artists or hairstylists. However, if you're only following other people who do the same thing, you don't have an unorthodox view of what it can be. So you should go to a museum. You should uh, you should know what how the paint translates on the face. How do they make that two-dimensional two item become so three-dimensional? Yes. How do you, do you go some, sometimes into the wings of the Met? or the, the MoMA and see how that translates. When you bring that back mm-hmm. to your YouTube, when you bring mm-hmm. that back to your client, and also when you bring those back to, to an art uh, director or someone, a stylist, you have so much more to add to a conversation. You have so okay. much more to range. You know, if we're only following each other, where's the range, mm-hmm. do you know? So go to a museum, guys. If I can say, tell you anything, if it's, it's because my love of art has made me a wealth of knowledge in terms of inspiration. Mm-hmm. Are you asking me on a date to go to the museum? All day. <laughs> Not heard of him. You'll see the part two, the, the B side of uh, this album. He's so sweet. Is going to be at the He's asking me to go to the museum <laughs> at the Louvre in Paris. Oh yeah, so no let's doubt. Go. No doubt. I hope you guys are really really taking notes and taking this to heart because it's not about the wing liner, the cut crease. If you want to do someone like Beyonce or Kim Kardashian mm. or Carly Kloss or... It's, it's about these other things. I remember that Charlotte Tilbury, when um, I was assisting her, she told me, you know, hey, she pulled me aside one day. We were at backstage in Milan at this show called Intro. She told me, you know, hey, listen, I have you here because you are you. I have you here because you are different. And it, a light bulb went off that I can be myself. I can be... I don't have to be what I was told this business was, you know? And so once that happened, I ran with it. Yeah. So were, were you freelance up until, like, recently? Like, well, when you say freelance... As, as far as business, like, like yeah. for someone out there that's at home, like me, like, I was, like, 16 at home, like, I didn't know if I should get a manager or an agent. Mm. I don't know how to get a manager. For So for someone that's, like, an aspiring makeup artist, like, I'm from Orlando, yeah. for, for my girls and boys in Orlando that want to be a makeup artist that are unsigned... You All you need to do, you never ask for your own money. You never negotiate your own rates. You have someone... It can be your sister. It can be your cousin. It can be someone who just has a better sense of business than you do. When you're creative, you don't always... Roll in those circles of okay. knowing how to do that. So get someone you trust. It does not have to be an agent. I'm here to tell mm-hmm. you, it does not have to be an agent. Mm-hmm. It can just be someone who's really good with accounting, who mm-hmm. who can ask for the money for you, and you can just show up to the job and just do the job. You don't have to worry about that weird. Am I am I asking for too much? Or no, take yourself out of that altogether. Okay, so I did a post on Instagram of the two of us, and I asked you guys to leave a comment or a question for Sir John, a Joel underscore Era. Uh, Sir John and Patrick Starr, how do you get Beyonce's makeup to stay for hours on end? Mm. It's all about duality. So duality means I use a cream foundation and a powder foundation. Okay. And I even use a, a, a mattifying moisturizer. So it's, oh, okay. it's all these steps and it's layering. So I use a cream blush and then I set it with a so powder So they all blush. dance together and work together. They all dance together. But that duality and using creams and powders to set themselves creates like a bulletproof face. Mm-hmm. You know? Do you bake? I don't are, you, are you a brush person? I'm a brush person. I, I never use sponges, really. I use... Uh, You're such an artist. Yeah, <laughs> I never really use sponges, and I'm not a fan of matte skin, so sponges... I use sponges in concert. I really have to have it set and stay. I mean, she's going off. She's doing her thing, yes. you know? So I definitely... But I'm a brush guy. I like the light approach of using a powder just to sort of mattify the T-zone. Uh-huh. I love a luster to the skin. Uh-huh. I'm sure a lot of us think we are at a concert, which is why we probably all love to use every sponges. Day is a con- every day is a concert. Every day is a every show. Every day is one way. Every day. You know? <laughs> M-A-J 
Madge OCP, what has been your biggest obstacle through your career? Um, As I crack my what knuckles. Is, <laughs> what is the what is the <laughs> hardest um, biggest obstacle? The the you know the largest obstacle I feel it hasn't been it's but I, I use it to my advantage is the fact that I was working in the fashion industry that was not it's it's not inclusive it's not inclusive they mm-hmm. they want people who. If they want either, if the photographer's all British, if he's British, everyone's English on set. If they're French, they're everyone's French on set. So being a minority has been a challenge in the fashion industry because there are, as a, as a child growing up, there were no people of color working in the business. Mm-hmm. Like I'm backstage, even in 2016, on a huge set, and I'll see one, one maybe possibly one Asian. We need so many more opinions now. We need so many more cooks in the kitchen to say, hey, yes, this this represents this demographic or this represents my, my community really well. So for that has been a challenge, but I just, you know what I decided to do? I, I'm gonna go where they love me, where the people love me, and that is mass. So that's why I went to L'Oreal, and that's what I went to celebrities and superstars. If you can talk to 13-year-old Sir John and yeah. give him advice now, and he's sitting next to you right here, what would you tell him? Uh, I don't know why this question always makes me a little bit like emotional, but. I'm, I'm gonna say, what would I tell 13 year old SJ? 13 year old Sir John, you're not wasting your time. You are in the right place. So just what, what it's for you will not pass you. So just, just, just continue to work on your craft, to continue to, to prepare for greatness. So to continue to own your craft and do amazing things wherever you are, because when opportunity meets itself, you'll be ready. So, so, so many of us aren't ready when opportunity meets. So I was ready when opportunity met because I just- Always prepared. You have to be ready, you gotta be ready. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Cool. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Amen, I was ready yeah. when you came. Okay, you were ready when I, I was met ready you. when you came. <laughs> and your makeup kit is ready for us to look at. It is, it is, it is, it is. Shall we go look at his let's kit? Do it, let's do it, guys. Yeah. Okay, can you pick out either three to five things? I would prefer five things that are Beyonce must haves for when you do her. Ooh, mm. I'm gonna say, okay, but mind you, these are things that I love to use. I don't that know you if love she to loves use. them, yes. but I love them. Okay? But that you love, I mean, she so, loves you, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, go I'm gonna throw it back. It. Okay, cool, it's all it. about the it's duality. All <laughs> it's that duality of Beyonce to Sir and Sir to Beyonce, whether yeah. she doesn't know how to use it or like it or what. Duality, Let's do right? this, okay, cool, so five, right? Five, five. pieces? Five, let's do it. Five pieces that I need to have. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna go for A, number one. I do love my black track fluid line. Black, black track, track, black okay. track fluid line. I wouldn't have gotten through on the run. Okay, had to have that. I am insanely in love with Lash Paradise. Lash Luminous, Paradise. Luminous Lash Paradise. Oh, so she likes her eyes. She, we, I love a mascara. Okay. We love mascara. Okay. Mascara is the jam. Two. My time for a bronzer. I have, I have okay. to say, we couldn't get through jobs or shows or editorials or covers without that. Something else that might be major for us. Does she look into this mirror? Yes, all it's the time. Just, it's Something else that is really, really good. This is the Make It Forever HD Loose. And you'll use this for the setting um, concealer for all the girls. She's on all the girls. This is this is a, a, but also a must have. Thing. You have to have that. Another one and then a brush. Like that's a okay, must cool. have. I'm gonna give you these. I have to say it. I love this right here. These are matte monos, and this eyeshadow is called Madison Avenue. And this Madison Avenue is pigment, good for the, pig, for the lash line. That's tons of pigment. Oh. This would be really cute for like the monochromatic makeup look that's really popular right now okay. in terms of eyes. And then yeah. a brush. A must have brush. A must have brush would happen to be right. Artiste. These brushes are my favorite. These are like the Rolls Royce of Brushed brushes. Oh. You see how these revolutionize the way we so apply skin. So this is for like the boob slash chest collarbone. Face, every, when and you buff in you your don't... foundation with this, it makes it look like a second skin. It always looks like it's airbrushed on. So people are like, how do you get the skin to be so brilliant and so like there's barely nothing there? Make sure you use a brush that you can buff to a beautiful shine. And then I like to use this to carve out the contours or the really contour mm. the forehead, go into the body, the cleavage or anything. And this brush has been used. Oh yeah. And I'm trying to think, let's bring it home with something else. Let's bring it home oh, with- you're excited. You're, you're going past five. We, oh, 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 did we go, did we make it to yes, five? Yes, we made it to five. Okay, cool, that's it. We, you have six. Five. Well, six is not a good number, so we're gonna do five or seven. Okay, let's do one more, five, seven. Okay, cool. I'm gonna say, I'm, I love by Terry. By Terry, I'm not sure by if you guys Terry, know yes. My Lux girls out there who, who spend a good amount for a lip balm. This is rose infused lip balm and it's, it smells like roses. I'm obsessed with mm. rose. I'm yes, obsessed with rose. is very rosy. Yeah. They have very just rosy colors. And And I think that's it. I want to show you guys more goodies, but I feel like I can't go on for uh, one. No. Sh- show us more. We can All right, edit. Well, so we, we can... both love, I love, is the rose you fragrance. You know I wore this top just for... By Diptyque. Mm. You can't smell this, but this smells Everybody like said, hey, the Ms. most Cotton. heavenly rose fragrance ever. I'm a guy, but I smell like roses every single day. 
No All right. wonder you, you get so close to them. The girls like it. Ladies like it. <laughs> so that's a secret. That's a secret. It's like, it's, it's, sometimes it's okay to have a little bit, to be a little masculine and feminine at the same time, to have like a, a mental transgressive. Do you notice a lot, a, a lot of the girls would be like, oh, you smell so good. Yeah, yes, I, I know. Absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, t today, I, I just listen, I just have the gem. Much. Thank you very much. It's all about being able to enter the spirit of the opposite sex. So being a guy, but thinking like woman, or being a girl and thinking, being able to enter the masculine mentality. Those so people go far. Awesome. I have one more, I have one okay. more, I have one more. Okay. I love Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream, but for the eyes. Oh, it's really? really? I like to use this as a prep for lips. So I really, oh. I use this on the lips, it really plumps you the eyes. I have the small one. I have the... Oh no, but this is for the eyes. Oh, this is the eye, this yeah. is the... Magic Cream for the eyes. And to take everything off, I like to use these Revitalip removers, but I like them because they're also, they're infused with like a repairing or sort of um, anti-aging serum. Oh, you use the eye rescue for the, for like for the lip lips, prep. For the eyes, it's all about hydration. Hydration is key when it comes to makeup. Makeup slides across a, a hydrated skin or appearance so much easier did you have a good time today yes yeah? thank you awesome. so much sir john for coming thank on my channel me. giving us <laughs> the beyonce scoops and tips and all, all of all of your magic tricks and thank you for Absolutely. inspiring all of us and be sure out there you guys life opens up when you do be kind yes, yes. connect say hello to all these yes. people speak and to everyone the people who are sweeping the floor are just as important as the people who you feel are important Yes. Everyone has a place, and if you neglect to realize that, you'll be left behind. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to follow him on Instagram. Sir John Official on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yes, subscribe to my channel if you guys want to see more. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye! Standing us into empty robots. Get on your way to me. I am the escape, escape.